This is London. Here is Bill Downs reporting from somewhere in Normandy. Go ahead, Downs. I'm speaking to you from a camp somewhere in Normandy. That beautiful school we France liberated eight days ago by the invasion of British, Canadian, and American troops. It is 6.30 a.m. over here. The ninth day of the invasion is only a few hours old. If you hear strange noises during this broadcast, it's the RAF and the Allied Air Forces and the American Air Forces on dawn patrol. It's more than dawn patrol, it's dawn attack. I could take you right now in a 30-minute seat ride to where the Allied troops are fighting. You can get to some part of the front in 30 minutes, no matter how or where you happen to be here. So much has happened these past eight days that they seem like eight months to every one of us over here. Americans have died, and British and Canadians have died, and a very great number of Germans have died. But the Allied forces have achieved what Hitler's henchmen said was impossible. We are in Europe to stay, and you only have to look at the face of an American doughboy or into the eyes of a man from Calgary or from London to know that we're not going to stop until we have completed the job. All this comes under the category of making history. The news from the front this morning is good. As a matter of fact, we've had no bad news reports since the Allied forces crossed the beaches. On the American sectors of the front, the troops continue to widen the bulge, threatening the entire peninsula of Cherbourg. The British Canadian sector likewise is slowly expanded. There are holdups at a village here and there, which the Germans have strongly fortified. There has not been much forward movement. But you might compare this bit of liberty front to a giant muscle which daily is becoming stronger and stronger as the sinews of war pour into it. As more tanks and guns and men pour in, the muscle expands. Thus far, the Germans have been unable to do much fighting. However, last night and today, there are signs that the Nazi High Command has finally been able to get some fresh troops into the line. The fact that it took a week for his first reinforcements to arrive speaks for itself as to the effectiveness of the Allied night and day bombing over the past few months. But as the Germans reinforce, and we are reinforced, there can be little doubt that a big battle is developing. In this sense, the Battle of Plants is a race between the supply systems of the opposing army. The force that can superiority first will break. You'll be interested to know that our supply division is all right. I've heard so many stories of gallantry and pure threat since I arrived here that it is difficult for me to begin to tell them. Heroes are not uncommon on this feature. I was lucky in my own personal invasion of France. I came in on a comparatively quick As General Montgomery has announced, the battle for the features has been won. Sometimes when we're not so busy, History will record the Battle of the Commandos, who landed behind the German defenses and so disrupted the Nazis that they were firing at each other. Or of the Canadians who walked point blank in the German shorefire to silence these guys. And the most glorious single action of the whole invasion was performed by the American assault force. They clung to their position literally by their fingernails. They fought as no Americans were under such control. They were outnumbered, outgunned, with odds 20 to 1 against them. They took their position coming to a wall of shrapnel, mortar fire, and machine gun bullets that was terrifying. The casualties were high, higher than on any other case. 